Welcome to the introduction video for the USU Horseback Riding Simulator Study. The official title, The Effects of an Equine Riding Simulator as an Objective Feedback Modality on Learning Outcomes for Rider Competency on Performance Skills in Equestrian Riding Fundamentals. Welcome. My name is Kelly Munns, and I'm one of the researchers on the USU Horseback Riding Simulator Study. First and foremost, I want to thank you for your participation to make this study happen. In this video, we're going to review a few items that we'd like you to be familiar with prior to coming to your first session. If you have any questions, please write them down and we can address them when you do come for that first session prior to starting. That's me, Kelly Munns, and I'm going to take you through this riding instructional video on the Racewood Riding Simulator. There are four items I would like you to be familiar with prior to coming to your first session. We're going to talk about mounting and dismounting. We're going to do this just a little bit different than we normally would with a horse probably at home. But the reason we do this is to preserve the calibration that exists in the saddle sensors. We're going to talk about the simulator sensors. We're going to talk about riding the simulator. And we're going to talk about what seat stability is. First, mounting and dismounting. When you mount the simulator, we're not going to mount this like we typically would a regular horse, but we're going to put the foot in the stirrup and put pressure in and then swing the leg over. And again, the reason for this is, is these sensors down here have been calibrated so that this reads stability correctly, and that actually risks those sensors not reading uh, correctly. So when you mount on this, you're going to put your right leg over, you're going to put your hand on the cantle and the pommel, and push down evenly and slide yourself up to the center. That's the way you'll mount. The same way will happen in reverse when you dismount. You'll put your hand on the pommel and the cantle. You'll slide your foot down to the top tier of that mounting block, and then slide your right leg over to dismount off of it. And again, I know this isn't traditionally the way we would normally mount or dismount a horse, um, but what we're doing this for is to protect the calibration that are in these airbag sensors, which is a big part of what this simulator will bring when it comes to seat stability. Again, we will show you how this will happen when you come to your first session. You'll also have an option of the mounting block I'm standing on, or one other option of a higher, one tier higher mounting block you can use. The second is the Racewood Simulator Sensors. Let's review what they do and what they are. The Racewood Riding Simulator has several options and modes to select from in order to achieve certain goals and skills in riding. For this study, we are going to solely focus on using the simulator in what is called the instruction mode. This gives us a sensor-only interface, and you can see that on the TV screen in the background. The first set of sensors are the leg sensors. There are three different placements of the leg sensors. You can even remove this panel and make slight adjustments to them if you needed to. This is the front sensor. This is the middle sensor, which is the sensor your leg would be on if your leg was correct, and this is the back sensor. If you look up the interface, you can see six boxes labeled, and as I'm on the left side pushing the furthest forward sensor, it lights up that box, then our middle sensor, and then our back sensor. The same thing is demonstrated on the right side when the leg sensors are engaged by the rider's leg. Front, middle, and back. Next, we have sensors that read front to back and left to right balance. And you can see that when we are looking at the red ball in the middle of that target-like diagram. If I press the front of the saddle or if I press the back of the saddle, if I go left or if I go right, that ball will move accordingly. So we have front and back sensors. And we also have left and right sensors. That red ball really does read overall stability. So if I was to press the back right of this saddle, the ball will also read back and to the right. This is a great tool that we're going to use in this study to understand what a rider's seat is doing. It reads weight as well as what's going on in terms of the stirrup and weight distribution in them. If I come down here to the reins, I can see that I can pull the horse's head left and right and that pressure is demonstrated by those horizontal boxes at the top of the screen. If I take light contact on both sides of the horse's mouth, I can also pull the horse up into a collected frame, which is demonstrated by pressure algorithms in the middle vertical box. I also have these boxes on the side and bottom of the screens. These are going to read what's going on with movement and pressure over time. This bottom one is going to read front to back balance and movement. The box over here to the right is going to read left to right movement. 
Balanced and centered is always on the red line. These two boxes here are going to read pressure from your leg sensors, front, middle, and back. And this one here is going to read what's going on with the reins, the left rein, the right rein, and if we have any crossing over going on. These are all the basic sensors that give us a read of what the rider is doing and how their aids are cueing and how much pressure it takes. A very valuable tool when we're trying to instruct riders to have better aids and better balance. The riding the simulator going through the three different gates the simulator offers. So you can see what the simulator does in terms of the three different gates. We're going to run through it so you get an idea of how a move is prior to showing up if you've never seen one of these. So this is Bodhi, is what I adoringly call him, and we want to Bodhi go and walk. Now each gate actually has three speeds, tempos within it. There is collective walk, there is medium walk, and then there is extended walk. So you do have three variations that exist within it. You will always know which gate your horse is in or bogey is in because it will tell you at the very, very top, there'll be some text up there that'll tell you what gate you're in and then which mode of that gate you're in. So I think we need to be the So here's bogey, he went into medium. So he came out of collective, went into medium. If I go back into collective, you notice that the uh, wither rises and the fruit drops. If we go into medium, the uh, wither drops and the fruit drops, or the draw this rises. And then extend it so we get full range of motion on bony. Collect the trot, again, this is a quick drop, and we the rise. Medium trot, we get more tempo out of it, we get a little bit more level. And then extend the trot so we see the full range of motion. And then canter, then collect the canter, the is low, the weight is high. Medium canter, we level out a little bit, we get a little more tempo. And then extend the canter, the full range of motion. So these are the three gates and the three variations within each gate that this simulator can When you ride the simulator, you will be going through all three gates, walk, trot, canter. Riding the simulator forward and backwards. While you're mounted on the simulator, there's just a few things that I'm going to review with you again prior to coming to your first session so you're familiar with. So when we ride the simulator, anytime we want to go forward, it's imperative that you always ask the bogey from the middle leg sensors. Not the front sensors, not the back sensors, but the middle sensor. And again, you can even see in my position here that keeps my leg nice and low, right underneath my leg bone. So this is a proper riding alignment. So if I want bogey to walk, I just squeeze both my middle sensors, and then bogey starts to walk. Now it does take a little bit of time to learn the simulator to go through all three gates and all three tempos within to your extended medium uh, and collective walk, trot, and canter. But if I want uh, Bogey to go ahead and slow down, then I just take a little feel on their reins and give it a little half halt, and I can move back down. And if you're not familiar with the term half halt, half halt is anything that we do that a moment in time we're asking that horse to pause, whether it's to balance, whether it's to slow down, whether it's to prepare. So again, if I want him to go forward, I'm just going to use my two middle sensors. I'm obviously in very appropriate for this. I want to get a drop, so we're in medium walk, extended walk, and So I just slowly titrate it through all three modes in that walk that you get here. And again, if I want to go back to the walk, I just take a little feel from my reins and a little half to ask the stairs <laughs> to come back to If I want a cue for Tanner, so my left or right. Four horses, um, like they'll be on the simulator, you're going to put a front leg forward, a lazy leg forward, the outside leg back, and you're going to squeeze both of those sensors together. And when you squeeze those sensors together, you will get the horse to go into the canter loop that you want. So I ask for left leg canter, and my front leg forward, my right leg back. If I want a right lead, I put my right leg forward and my left leg back. I can even squeeze, and that's how much the leg change. And again, if I want to go back down into the trot leg, which is as normal. This is going to happen as you ride it, or ride it, trying to find a little bit of a finesse that occurs to make this happen. So you can always go back to this video and remember how we struggle too. And I've written this a lot. So again, if I want to go back to walk, take a little feel, and walk it down. So I was being a little too aggressive with my which is probably um, something. Through. 
So unfortunately, this does not mean the thigh engaging and the core engaging in so many ways to ask the swords to come back. But again, the principles apply as long as those are activated when we arrive at these ships to get the same result on the simulator. So those are just some basic little tools to use when you're writing this, how do you go forward and how do you come back. And don't stress too much. We will review these at your first session. Last is seat stability. So when we're talking about seat stability, we're talking about everything from the stirrup to the leg to the hips to the shoulder. All of these things can affect a rider's seat stability. The more stable we are, the more in sync with the horse we are. Remember, we are diametrically opposed to a horse. That means anything that their movement does makes us want to move in the equal and opposite direction. So if a horse goes left, our body wants to go right. So seat stability is all about training our body to stay with the horse in sync as best as possible. So it truly takes movement to stay in sync and still on the horse. When we talk about seat stability and the ways we can fix it, we're looking for a rider to stay in the center and have enough movement that it matches the horse's movement. If the horse is walking forward and left, we follow forward and left. If we're asking the horse to turn to the right, we follow to the right. If the horse is cantering left lead, we follow to the left. These sort of things are all involved in seat stability. Now this being said, all of us have steep seat instability for multiple reasons. I have very rarely had the same riders back to back have the same problem of why they may have had the same issue in their stability. And what I mean by that is I've had several riders have issues with being too far to the right, but the way we address it with every rider has been different. Some riders, it's a really tight hip joint. Some riders, they truly do lean. Some riders, it was a matter of what one hip was doing versus the other hip. Maybe the right hip was too far forward. Perhaps it was too far back. So seat stability is highly, highly individualized. And this is something you will examine when you ride the simulator in this study, particularly when you have feedback, whether it's from the visual screen or from an instructor. Now the last thing I need you to do is go to the Calendly link and sign up for your three sessions. Remember, it's very important you only use your participant number. Your information has been de-identified, so all the data cannot be pulled back to who you are as an individual. It will only be pulled back to your participant number. If you accidentally sign up with your name, please feel free to cancel that session and re-sign up with your participant number.